start it. Wait, did you start it? Yeah. It's probably a large, large vessel. We have to get the terminology right? So, and I'm guessing here, because this is a large vessel and we don't have an elastic state, but from my figure up is probably what? Tunica intima. We want to keep in mind that the intima contains the endothelial lining, sometimes a little bit of loose connective tissue in larger vessels, and then, although we can't see it here, there's an internal elastic lamina. So from here to here is the tunica made up mostly of with elastic lamella, so layers of elastic sheets, if you will, of elastic tissue that have holes in them so that food muscle cells in adjacent layers can communicate and also so endothelial cells can communicate. Down here we have what? The adventition. This, this, and this, or what? Well, there's connective tissue there, but that vasa vasorum, or blood vessels of blood vessels, right? And on the larger vessels, you can't use diffusion to get nutrients down here and waste products out. So you have its own vascular. Are we clear on the distinction between adventitia and cirrhosis? Right, let me go over that again. If I structure a blood vessel, a portion of the GI tract is just embedded in surrounding connective tissue, we call it an adventition. Okay? If a structure is suspended in a body cavity, the tissue that suspends it is called a cirrhosis. And that consists of a simple squamous epithelial cell we call mesothelium, sometimes a little bit of loose connective tissue and fat. All right? Now the other ringer here is that vest is structures that are exposed to a body cavity, such as the kidney or the descending aorta, right? On one that side that they're exposed to the cavity would be cirrhosal, right? Think of that image I showed you of the ureter, where it had a cirrhosal side, but on the back side, opposite the body cavity, it would be adventitial because it's kind of embedded in surrounding connective tissue. Okay? That was a long digression to get to this slide, which is just the elastic state. Okay, so this is an example of an elastic or conducting artery. Are you talking aorta, uh, carotid, common carotid, iliac, large artery like that. <coughs> Alright, what do we have here? Yeah, a muscular artery. All right. You can see the internal elastic lamina. If you're careful, I know on, I pointed it out at one point, if you look in all these little nooks and crannies, you can see profiles, nuclear profiles, which would belong to what type of cell? Exactly. The point is the endothelial cell on this side of it. Right? So, tunica media. The adventitia, a tunica, external elastic lamina, excuse me, is not very well defined, but it would be in this region right here. And then we move into an adventitia. We've got lots of adipocytes. All right, this is clearly an artery, all right? So this gives you a sense of scale. This is getting down into the very small artery, arteriola, right? Remember, arterioles are gonna have one to four Blue muscles in their tunica media. All right. You should all embed in your memory the diameter of a red blood cell because it helps you get a sense of scale, which is six to eight microns. Okay? Now, capillaries. The capillary size of a, a continuous or a fenestrated capillary is on the order of seven to ten microns. All right? So if you're looking at tissue, and you see something like that, and it's got a lot of red blood cells in it, you know you're not looking at a capillary, right? It gives you that sense of skin. So here's a, a reasonable example of a small artery 
in vain. You get the sense of this relative proportion of luminal area to wall thickness, much smaller luminal area to wall thickness. All right? Oftentimes the veins, because they don't have the smooth, as much smooth muscle, tend to collapse. You can see that the luminal profile here is more oblong and not circular. Now, I don't see one, but a capillary would be something on the order of that size. All right? You've got a dipocyte, you know that fat is a very well vascularized tissue. Where, where are the three regions that you find fat in our bodies? Just general regions. Yes, yes. Abdominal fat, that's the bad stuff because it's a really highly active hormonal tissue. Subcutaneous fat, right? And then retroperitoneal around the liver, right? But, you know, like when you get to be my age, you got to worry about that abdominal fat. <laughs> All right. So here's an electron micrograph of an endothelial cell. It's, I don't think it's the same one I just showed, but it doesn't really matter. We've got the nucleus here. We've got side, we've got a junction here, and it's a probably tight junction, and then a portion of another cell, right? So I have seen capillaries formed by a tight junction in itself, right? This one is nice because you have this cell right here surrounding it, which is called a parasite. It's kind of a hybrid between a muscle cell and a connective tissue cell. All right, so at, at any rate, this luminal diameter is on the order of 7 to 10 microns, just what it would take to have a red blood cell work its way through. Okay, on the lymphoid tissue. We are clearly looking at here. All right, well, we're looking at several things. Pears patch. Iris patch will tell us we're looking at what region of the small intestine. Mm -hmm. all right. And we know it's small intestine because we can see all these finger-like projections, which are... Okay. Before we talk about Pears patch, let's do the organization of the gut wall. All right? So we'll start from the lumen. The mucosa consists of what? Uh, this is the columnar, columnar, columnar. Okay, the epithelium, which is simple, columnar, we've got goblet cells. The connective tissue core of a villus is called what? And it's an example of what kind of connective tissue? Loose. Loose, good. There's a, you can just hallucinate it at this magnification, but he'll remove it. This region right in here, interrupted here, a couple of smooth muscle cells stick is called the muscular mucosa. Exactly. So the mucosa consists of the epithelium, the lamina propria, and the muscularis mucosa. The pears patch, for the most part, and then this region right in here is what? Submucosa. Then we've got this region out here, which is called the which consists of an inner circular, and this is by definition, right? Because it's wrapping around the lumen and an outer longitudinal. We know we can find myenteric plexus of our box in here. If we're lucky and have a good eye, we can find mycerus, submucosal plexus of mycerus. See this little bit of fat up here? If we were to look carefully here, we might see the simple squamous epithelia cell, or nuclei of mesothelium. So this is kind of suspending here. If we were really lucky, we could pick up the serosa out here. Out here, there's not...